Oh man, the Alphabet Boys are not gonna like this video. So today, I just discovered this application called OnionShare, which is a free and open source application that lets you easily set up your own chat rooms, share files, and even set up your own website on Tor, all for free. It is, of course, free software, but also gratis. Free as in free beer. Uh, you don't have to pay for hosting or anything like that. Uh, to get your own website set up there. Now, of course, it is available on Linux. Uh, it's mostly available as a snap uh, or a flat pack. Uh, it is available in the uh, overlays for Gen 2. There's a couple different overlays that have it. Uh, probably this one is what you'd wanna use since that's the latest version. And it is also available in the Arch community repository as well. So most of you on Linux will probably end up using the Flatpak unless you're using Arch or Gentoo. I'm actually going to be showing you the Flatpak that's on Linux Mint today. Uh, now, so far, the Flatpak has been fairly fine. There is one little bug that I've run into when I'm sharing files. If I try to share some particularly large files, uh, I'll get this error message that says that my device has run out of space, which is kind of a confusing error message because I know it's not my computer that's running out of space, but the weird thing is if I try to share files again inside of the application, even if they are much smaller files, I still keep getting the same error message until I restart the application. So I don't know if that's just related to the flat pack uh, specifically. I'm probably going to try this out on Gentoo to see if I get any different results uh, and then give you guys an update. So let's take a look at Onion Share because this application this is really, really easy to use. This is just a normal interface. It's not a command line. It isn't anything that should be confusing to anyone. It's just a normal application. It's even got a dark mode, uh, which I've got it in now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just go through these different functionalities that it has. So uh, share files, okay? Drag and drop files and folders to start sharing. It doesn't get any easier than that. So I'll just go ahead and add a few files in there. Uh, so here are the different options that we have. Uh, stop sharing after files have been sent. Uh, so this is usually what you'd wanna use if you're just going to be sending a few files to one person. Basically what's gonna happen is after the files are sent, that person downloads them, then the service is just going to go down. Uh, so if we uncheck this, then it's going to be persistent and it's going to allow uh, whoever has access to it to download the files multiple times. Uh, save this tab and automatically open it when I open Onion Share, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just gonna start this tab up whenever you uh, open the application. Uh, and this is a public Onion Share service, and this disables the private key. Uh, so that is uh, also pretty straightforward what it's gonna do. Um, so the private key, uh, all of these by default are going to have that to just make it so that any random person can't access the service. Uh, so this is just downloading files. So it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I can reveal the private key. And so we'll go ahead and copy it. And here I'll bring Tor over here. Split the windows like this. Okay, I can't quite split it perfectly, but uh, whatever, this is good enough. So. Paste in the address, and then it's going to ask us for the key. And we just paste that in, done. And it takes a little bit to connect because of course we're connecting to it over Tor. And now we can go ahead and start downloading these. Uh, whoop, it's actually download files. Okay, so we'll download them as a zip. And uh, yeah, we'll just save it and then we'll go ahead and open it up. Or actually, I should be able to just show you the files here. <laughs> so yeah, we've got some, uh, some spicy memes that we're gonna share over Tor because I don't know, maybe they're illegal in some countries. Not yet, but maybe soon. Yeah, so this is pretty much how the file sharing works. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Uh, oh, and under the advanced tab, this is just, uh, you can change like the name of the tabs, which is very useful uh, if you want to have multiple instances of these running, which you can do, by the way. I don't know if there's any limit to um, 
how many instances you can really have open or even if there's a limit to uh, how big of files you can share. Like here, uh, you can see that I'm sharing a 521 megabyte uh, file. So yeah, you can share like, I think there's an 18 minute uh, full HD MP4. Pretty decent sized file, uh, and it tells you a warning here, sending large files could take hours just because obviously on tour it's gonna be slow. Uh, so downloading it is gonna be pretty slow. Uh, and then you can start onion service at schedule time and stop onion service at schedule time. I think all of them pretty much have the same advanced uh, settings where you can just change the tab name and then start and stop it at a schedule time. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at receive. Uh, so this pretty much works in the opposite way of sharing the files. Basically, it turns your computer into an anonymous Dropbox. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you how that works. Um, let's see. I, okay, don't want it to be public. And we'll show advanced settings. Yeah, that's the same. Okay, so we'll start. And uh, I'm not going to show the private key on this one. And... I would recommend definitely enabling the private key for something like this uh, because this is going to let people actually send files to your computer. So obviously you probably don't want random people on the dark web to just be able to do that. So we'll go ahead and uh, connect and copy the private key. Okay, and then it should go ahead and start up. Okay, so write a message so we can <laughs> basically say wh whatever, hello, uh, submit. And then, okay, so the message is submitted. And now if we come over here, uh, we can read the message and it's gonna prompt us to open it up in a uh, messaging application. So just look at it in LibreOffice Writer and hello. So we see the message. And we can also send files. So let's see, let me find another meme, one that's not too spicy for YouTube. Uh, okay, this should work. I think I can just uh, drag and drop, yeah, submit. Okay, and then um, should be able to see file. And so this is how the um, breakdown is gonna go for where the folders are. Uh, there should be multiples of these. Yeah, so these are like different uh, times that I was testing it. And again, you can have multiple instances of this running at once. Uh, you'll have different, uh, I believe you'll have different onion addresses uh, for each one that's running. And yeah, <laughs> that's the image that we downloaded. Uh, so I'll go ahead and stop receiving. So now let's take a look at the website. This is the part that uh, I'm really excited about because it could actually be a way to practice web development and I guess also dark web development uh, without having to rent a VPS or uh, pay any extra money. Uh, so you can just drag and drop, okay? It's, it's that easy. Uh, also, if you have something like a Raspberry Pi, you could throw this onion share service on it. There's also a command line version of it available and you can just have multiple things running persistently as your uh, dark web service from home. So this, this actually does seem like it's a viable way to um, run a, a dark website. Uh, I'm actually going to let some of these run for a while after I publish this video to actually let you guys interact with them. Probably I'll do the chat uh, as long as everybody behaves themselves and uh, I'll let this website run. Uh, that I'll show you in a moment because that's just a static site. Uh, so this is just um, just a little uh, JavaScript practice thing I was doing. Uh, and for the options, we have don't send uh, content security policy header. So this, if you check this box, this is going to allow your website to use uh, third-party resources. So if you're familiar with sites on the dark web, a lot of them disable this kind of stuff. They disable third-party resources and they disable Java, JavaScript because it can be... Uh, a little bit of an issue, like especially if you're doing something illegal and you're going to have like state sponsored hackers, like actual, uh, you know, FBI or CIA or whatever hackers trying to take down your website. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit easier for them to do it if there's JavaScript running. So it's just a security precaution. Uh, and that's why by default it turns it off. Like uh, if I show you guys this, um, we'll just make it public, start sharing. 
This isn't going to work uh, because as you can see, it's JavaScript book list app. So even though it's just like a very tiny little bit of JavaScript in it, uh, you'll see that it's like kind of scuffed looking. But if I stop sharing, then I check this box and I start sharing again. And let's see if it changes the um, link. I don't think it did, yeah. So we'll just refresh the page. And so uh, you can see it's working now. This is supposed to be like a, like a little library practice app thing. <laughs> trying to learn JavaScript so I can make some actual web apps. Uh, yeah, so that's how the website thing works. And then there's a static website that I uh, have running that I'll let you guys see. Oh, that's the, uh, the chat. Uh, so let's see, this is the same one. Yeah, so this is just like um, Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. Well, I called it the greatest dark web, the greatest site on the dark web, <laughs> just to uh, have a bit of a laugh. Uh, so yeah, we got Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. We've got My Crypto Wallets, because of course you gotta have a way for people to donate to you on the dark web and using uh, official dark web currencies, Monero and, well, I actually don't see Wownero that much uh, on the dark web. Usually it's uh, Monero and Bitcoin, but I'm gonna do Wow Monero and Wownero. Uh, then we have Monero Chan's blog. <laughs> so just some random pictures I found of Monero Chan. We've got her talking to John McAfee here. Uh, little little dance going on there, and then we got her smacking a. I think this is an IRS agent. Yeah, smacking an IRS agent. Then we've got some Wow Narrow memes. Warning: these are incredibly dank. Yeah, the Wow Narrow memes are. Um, you can go to suchwow.xyz. So there's like a whole bunch of these uh, on that site if you like these. And uh, then we have a lane because why not? So yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, I'll probably leave the site running for a little bit. I, I think I've had it up for at least a couple of hours now. So it, it can definitely run at least for a couple of hours. We'll see, maybe I'll leave it running overnight. Uh, so now we have the chat. So chat anonymously, uh, this is just, you can go ahead and set up your own server essentially. Now, this wouldn't be a replacement for something like Element. Uh, there's not as many options for what you can do. Uh, obviously, there's pretty much just uh, make it a public onion share service or not. Um, I don't even think that, like, I don't think you can ban people or like delete messages or anything like that. Uh, nothing is supposed to be saved anywhere. There's no logs. Uh, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Obviously, if you want to really build a real like darknet chat application, you would probably want to use Element and then just serve it uh, at, on a dark web VPS, or rather just a VPS that's got all of that Tor services running. Uh, you don't really have to worry about offshoring and doing anonymous VPSs as long as you aren't doing anything illegal. Uh, so yeah, you, we can just go ahead and start the chat server. Uh, well, actually, I've already got a, a different one running, but you can see you can have multiple ones running and they're going to be different addresses like this one's TYD. And this one ends in uh, seven QD. So we can go to it over in Tor here. And this is what it looks like. So, yeah, we can say, you know, this chat is being monitored. Hello. And this is a public one, so anybody can use this. Uh, I'll probably leave this up uh, for a few hours as well, as long as uh, everybody's behaving themselves in here. But yeah, check out Onion Share. It's a really easy to use application. Uh, and just like that, you can get started on the dark web. Even your grandma could set up a dark web site today and start selling her medication on it. Oh, another important thing about these Onion addresses is these are basically temporary addresses, okay? That's one of the uh, consequences of the whole free, you know, free beer aspect to this is you don't have to buy uh, addresses, but that also means that you don't own these addresses. So anytime you stop your service, uh, well, if you just stop the service like this and then you start it up, it usually will have the same uh, site. Like if we start it again, uh, shouldn't have closed it because I don't, okay, I have it open over here. Yeah, so it looks like it's the same address, uh, but 
I think if you have this stop for a long period of time, then this may get recycled by another person who's using this uh, onion share application. And also, if you close the application, your uh, onion share, that's pretty much a guaranteed way for it to change. So maybe you, it just reserves uh, a, a certain block of addresses for you when you start the application. I'm not exactly sure uh, how that part works. So, but just keep that in mind. You don't actually own the, uh, these URLs. So if you actually want to do that and have an even more persistent kind of dark website, then that's where you're going to have to start paying some money. That's it for this video, guys. Go ahead and check out OnionShare. Uh, like and comment to hack the algorithm. Also, when the Odyssey mirror of this video goes up, you can comment your Onion site on Odyssey if you want other people to check it out, the uh, site that you're going to be hosting through OnionShare. Um, I guess you could try commenting it on YouTube, but it's probably going to get deleted <laughs> instantly because YouTube doesn't really like links, especially not Onion links. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great night.